Safar that Allah the month of knowledge and wisdom, the month of running to the cave and seeking refuge from all that is other than Allah the month of testing so that the heart can open and the hijab between us and the reality is the me. I am the veil that blocks me from Allah's Divinely Presence, from what Allah wants to show of every haqqaiq and every reality, it's harda, it's veil, it's wall, whatever we want to call is me. So my life was how to destroy the me, the nafs within me, the character within me, not to raise it, not to glorify it but to bring it down so that the reality that Allah want to shine through so that I become your hearing, I become your seeing, I become the breath in which you breathe, I become the hands in which you touch, I become the feet in which you walk, I become the tongue in which you speak, a Divine mirror. But rid yourself of yourself and come to my Divinely Presence. And a reminder for a story that awliyaullah give an example that a very powerful businessman wanted to go for hajj. And in those times when you go for hajj you pay off all your debts, most of the people they don't know you know how long it's going to take, they sell everything, liquidate and they take their life with them in a bag, bag of coins. This wealthy businessman wants to go for hajj, he tells his wife, we're going for hajj, we make arrangements, he takes his bag of cash and starts to head out and thinks to himself that, why should I go alone, let me find one of these Babaji's, I'll take him with me. So he finds one of the peers, the shaykhs of the area, says, I'm going for hajj, why well, you don't come? I take you with me for Hajj. He says, sure, no problem. You inviting? I'm coming. He goes, they make their preparation, they get on their ship. This ship has to go all the way on its journey for the Hajj. As they're sitting on the ship, the shaykh is sitting and looking at the man and the man is, has his safeguarding, his bag, his bag of nuts, his bag of cash. And he's opening this bag and keep playing with all his coins and his money and his wife is sitting next to him. And then he starts to look at it and he starts to count his coins, so oh, look how many coins I have, how many coins. And then he looks to the shaykh and says, oh shaykh why are you looking at my bag of coins? You see the adab and, and the character of, of people. And is it that you want something, I have all these coins, is there something that you want from it? He says, yes, if you're asking I'll take. So, oh, <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of shaykh is this? I thought you guys are supposed to be pious guys and you don't want anything, you don't eat, you don't drink, nothing. You don't exist on this earth like a normal human being and the shaykh just stayed quiet. And he says, how much? If I was going to ask you from this bag of coins, how much would you want since you're putting your eyes on my bag of coins? He said, if you're asking I take half. Half? You crazy people, you, know, you got very angry. Half my coins? Half my life saving? He said, if you're asking, half. The half. He took one coin and threw it at him, this is enough for you. And then he put his coins, he hid him and he hid him in a compartment. Shaykh took the coin, kissed it, put it in his pocket. So at least one coin came from, the, from this adventure and he's sitting with him. And the shaykh goes back into his zikr, his contemplation. And then Allah on this ship the man begins to sleep, fall asleep. There are monkeys in the bottom of the ship because they take a whole cargo as they're journeying. Allah inspired the monkeys on the bottom of the ship to release themselves. 
they somehow get out, the monkeys get out of the cage and start running all over the ship. Monkeys are running. One specific monkey, by order of Allah go grab the bag. The monkey grabs this bag where it was hidden, runs up the pole of the ship. At that time the man wakes up, he's, he's having a heart attack, he starts to scream at everybody, the monkey stole my bag of cash, this is my entire bag of cash, I'm going on the journey of my life, I have nothing, he took everything. And the monkey is sitting there, open the bag and start to take the coins and one by one throw it into the ocean. He took another coin, the man is screaming, he took another coin and he throws it into the ocean. He took another coin, threw it into the ocean until there were no coins left. The man began to curse the shaykh. I don't know who you are, what type of curse you are, that I was going to go for hajj, I brought all these things. From the moment I met you I faced nothing but difficulty from you. You came, you wanted even my property and now look, look the monkeys came, they threw <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> into the ocean. Shaykh just looked at him that this guy like, is getting very aggressive and angry. So he just got his zikr and walked. And as he's walking, the, 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 now it was like coming a storm for the boat. The wife is standing a little bit down. The shaykh whispers something into the wife's ear and then walks away. At that moment the ship hits, the wife goes overboard. Goes right overboard into the ocean. The man has gone crazy now, he says, you are truly the wrong cursed person, I lost all my money and now the ocean took my wife, gone, everything is gone. And the shaykh just went to the back and was doing his zikr, being calm and patient and the ship finally docked. As it's arriving to dock <laughs> and to land, the man looks and he sees his wife on the shore and she's just waiting there for him with a bag and the ship stops, the man gets off, runs to his wife and said, I don't know what happened, the monkeys took all my money, they threw everything into the ocean and then you went overboard and flew. said, you don't know who that man is. Whatever Allah tested you with, as soon as he walked by me, he whispered into my ear, you're going to fall but don't worry, we're carrying you. I hit and went overboard, immediately like a wind came from nowhere, picked me, took me, I don't know how I arrived, I landed on this shore and in my hand is this bag of coins. And the man now doesn't know what to do, he has not the guts to apologize but the shaykh says, it's, it's enough, this is where me and you we part. That you thought this, this process is going to be easy? And you thought this journey to your life is, is to, to your Lord is going to be an easy prophet, is an easy process. That when Allah inspire us to take a higher path, to take a path towards realities and make a hijrah because it's not just the hajj you do once, every day is our hajj. Every day is a hijrah towards Allah until you take your last breath and you're gone. When Allah inspire that you're going to take with these shaykhs your way of marifa and your reality, it's not coming easy. There's a price to pay, there's something going to be taken. Allah described, I think in Surah Tawbah, there's a bargain to be made, Allah going to take your dunya from you because you didn't come for dunya, Allah takes your dunya from you and gives you your akhirah in exchange. And it's a system that is an ancient system and it works. And if you check the lives of these shaykhs, every everyone around them is from that reality. So when they came into this town there was a construction guy and he was building and building and building and he built a very beautiful home. Remember the beautiful home? with all glass, marble, staircase and he built with his own two hands. He built so, so much effort he put into that home and his wife even helped to build with him that home. And the home went. He thought he was all sorts of thoughts he was going to have for that house, the house went. Then that man took his family and they went to a shack up in the area and it was a shack. 
it was literally 200 years old. And anyone who saw him said, how are you living in that shack that was so old and, and, and falling apart? And he's firm in his belief. Never once said, I don't know what the heck this path is because he's is, is a noble background, noble ancestry that never his heart changed, never his thought changed, never he thought, oh my God, this is like a cursed path, I'm, I'm going to lose everything. Just keep doing zikr, keep doing your practices, keep doing everything. And it was but a time and Allah opened a beautiful home. That somewhere out of nowhere the person came, uh, uh, the loan came, the paperwork came, they don't even know how it came and everything opened for them. Allah's not in need to take anything because He wants it. But he wants to test the people. Then there's another person from the jama'ah who comes and served all his life and served and never asked a fee and all his family told him, why are you sitting there serving when you have an education and you could go out and you could earn money and you could earn this and you could earn that and his consistency and his belief that, I don't need any of that, Allah will provide, Allah sends to other people to provide. And in the end somebody passed away and they gave him a lotto. When Allah says, I give you from places you never imagine, means the life of the tariqah is real. It's not just stories, ask the people's lives here of what Allah took from them, brought them down and then when Allah wanted brought them back up. Allah's not in need of anything, it's that we are in need to be tested. Is it you came for those things and you be like a, a monkey, you know how they chop the monkey? They put a hole in the tree and they put some fruits but it's only a hole that's thick enough to put your hand like this. As soon as the monkey grabs, his fist can't come out. Are you going to grab this world like that where the monkey was stuck and every hunter coming to kill him? Means then they teach them that don't be attached to anything. This way is real, Allah will deflate and bring everything down and if Allah won't He can bring everything back up. But the path has a cost, are you willing to pay the price and even if you're not willing, if Allah enrolled you, your will, Allah will take it. It's much easier to give it and your life willfully than to run from your path and every type of hardship begin to follow. And that's why Allah make istiqamah fi tariqat, keep your istiqam and the firmness of your tariqah and your way. After you keep your firmness Allah will open like oceans of water upon the servant as a ni'mat and a blessing upon them and every way and every understanding in that way. Because this when we describe Surat al-Inshara and the understanding of Inshara as an opening towards marifah. That وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ By the time that Allah is crushing them from Ayatul Kareem before, as soon as they arrive and awliyaullah want to open وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ for the servant by order of Allah means He hit them in such a way that when they came back up they saw that everything is praising Sayyidina Muhammad وَرَفَهْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ because Allah shows the servant, I'm going to open your ears and the reality of your soul. When your ears open you see that Allah is describing, I have raised the owner and the zikr of Sayyidina Muhammad throughout creation. You don't have ears to hear it. But at that maqam and that station when they've been tested through those difficulties and Allah begin to open within their heart means their spiritual hearing, their spiritual vision. They realized everything is praising Sayyidina Muhammad What does Sayyidina Musa see? When he said, I want to reach this maqam, I want to see you. When Allah crushed all of the nafs, crushed all of the desires, Allah said, we sent our glory upon the mountain. Means at that moment he warafa nahlaka dhikrak. He went out and what he witnessed was the immensity of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad. If you witness the light, it's enough that you understood the mentioning and the zikr of Prophet. 
And when Allah is saying, I've raised your status. When Nabi Musa didn't want La illallah Musa Rasulullah, I don't want that. I want where the two rivers meet of La illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah I want to see you at that time when he got hit by that energy and that light, he understood wa rafahna laka dhikra. And that what we said in the tafsir of Surat al-Ishara, the next ayah is what? In Amal Usri Yusra. Difficulty then ease. As soon as they enter now into uh, Yus, <laughs> In Amal Usri Yusra, as soon as they enter into that ocean is like Safar. So Safar is for the, the general people that you want this love of Sayyidina Muhammad you want this reality. Take this path of difficulty while as a mentioning twice, it's because it's not that you took difficulty, everything became easy and goodbye, thank you, I got my diploma. Allah said, no, no, here we go again, it's like a roller coaster. Here comes again difficulty. And through every crushing is an ease, is a new maqam. Every crushing is a new maqam. Every crushing is a new maqam. This means the Prophet understood that. That you have to be crushed. As soon as you understood that and want wa rafana laka dhikrak, Allah said, then go to one of my servants, he's going to crush you. He's a Muhammadan representative and you wanted a knowledge of higher than what you understood, he will crush you. In the crushing we will bestow these knowledges. This is the month of knowledge and wisdom. Only through the difficulty and the crushing can Allah bring out these knowledges and these wisdoms because the self will begin to crush and what happens is the Divine mirror begins to open. That mirror has ulumul awwaleen wa akhireen because it's a Divine light. When Allah says, I'm going to be your hearing, is there a limit on what you can hear? It's Hadith al-Qudsi, I will be the hearing of my servant, there's no limit to what they hear. I'll be the seeing means what kind of light Allah dressing their souls. If you can hear with this qudra, see with this qudra, what limit do they have of knowledges? The light already dressing them and blessing them means infinite capacity of which can't even be understood. So we pray that in this holy month Allah dress us and bless us and that every difficulty is for a new station and a new opening. That Allah keeping everything to be beautific and everything continuously to be refreshed and that it's a real path. Many of the people's lives who have been influenced by the shaykh, they were brought down and then brought back up and their lives are, are a witness to the teachings and the reality of the shaykhs. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzatama yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بحرمه محمد المصطفى وبسير سورة الفاتحة. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.